Robert Herring is by one of our greatest 20th century opera composers and was written in 1947 by his newly formed opera group called the English Opera Group. It's based on the Maupassant story but reset in Suffolk in a small imaginary village called Loxford. This story of English village life is very full of class system which some of it still exists today. The village stalwarts are sticklers for moral discipline and repression. And that's represented, for instance, by academic counterpoint when you write what's called a dry fugue, and you hear it very clearly in the first scene of the opera. <laughs> have the clock. There are lots of clocks in this opera which chime, uh, one like a cuckoo in Lady Billow's house, because these aristocratic people feel that they should be guided by time and everyone should turn up exactly at the right time. The young people, of course, are always a little bit late. So you'll hear the chiming of the clock, which is like a cuckoo, which was based on uh, a friend of his whose nickname was Cuckoo. And then you'll hear after that, a deeper bell, which is in the orchestra, which is probably Big Ben. Ten seconds past, I make that. No, you're slow. Exactly right by mine. These bells are transformed into different ideas uh, when they talk about the May King. Instead of a May Queen, they're going to choose a May King because they can't find a suitable girl. Then with the music will change into the May King song. And then later on it would be the bells in the vicarage garden when every person turns up and at exactly the right time to eat and to crown the May King. The bells were, in all his operas, very emotive, and uh, there was a story that when he was a young boy, uh, one of the villages called Dunwich, which is, was right on the coast, because of the change of the sea, it completely flooded and disappeared under the sea, but they said you could still hear the bells ringing in the distance. <laughs> So the other pastiche is Wagner's Tristan and Isolde. In Tristan and Isolde, they take a magic drink which makes them fall in love, which causes a few problems for two more acts. And in this opera, Albert Herring, they, we have a, some lemonade which Sid spikes with a bit of rum, um, which causes Albert to get slightly tipsy, and he uses exactly the Tristan motive. Opposite of the village clock, or Lady Billa's clock, is Sid and Nancy, who are the younger group in the uh, village. And that's represented by whistling. Whistling is something you shouldn't normally do, you especially don't do it in the theatre, because it can bring bad luck. So Britain knew that, and uses lots of whistling, and it's used in the orchestra as well, and you'll hear it many, many times. So this opera contains many people you're going to recognise in your own life and it will bring you lots of joy and laughter.